Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Mickey. So one of the most important things that you can do is refactoring. If you want to write good, high quality, clean code, this is a step you cannot ignore. If you don't even know what refactoring is, you can check out the full lecture that I have on it in my C-sharp course. Basically, this is the constant process that helps you keep your code quality as high as possible. Like I said, it's a step you absolutely must do, and not just do once, but do it all over again. Anytime you look at some code and you think, oh, I think I could write this in a better way. Anytime you have that thought, chances are you should act upon it. You should rewrite the code in a better way so that it's more understandable, easily expandable. But then of course, when it comes to that topic, refactoring, what exactly is the practical approach to it? How exactly do you refactor? So that is basically the question that I got in my c -sharp course. So here you will ask, so on refactoring, what's your workflow on that? Let's say you write a first version of the code. Now you want to refine it. Presumably you'll work on a copy of the original code so you can run the original and compare the results, right? How do you organize these intermediate files without having something that looks like code version one, version two, and so on? And if this is a very, very important question, it is very important to refactor, and it's also very important to know how to refactor. And what he suggests here is actually quite interesting. The assumption that you work on a copy of the original code so you can run the original in order to compare the results. That's an interesting way, and that is one valid way of doing refactoring. However, it is definitely not the way that I normally do it. So here in my answer, nope, I just refactor a tiny piece at a time, constantly testing to make sure nothing breaks and still works the same throughout the entirety of the refactoring process. This is very much a crucial part of it, the whole point of refactoring is to basically reorganize how your code works to make it work in a better, more understandable way, but importantly, without modifying the behavior. A refactoring should not modify the behavior. If you've got one plus one equals two and you refactor that code, at the end, it should still say one plus one equals two. So it is important that when you are refactoring something, it is important to be constantly testing. And it's also very, very important what I said here, refactor a tiny piece at a time. Meaning you should not refactor, let's say a thousand lines of code at once. That is going to be an insane amount. No, you should split that up into smaller pieces and then refactor each piece individually. Basically because if you try to refactor a thousand lines of code at once, if you do that, chances are you won't be able to do it like this. You won't be able to constantly test and make sure everything still works. And the more code you modify before testing, the more are the odds that you might have introduced some bug without even knowing it. So good refactoring usually involves these two parts. So refactor a tiny piece at a time and constantly testing to make sure nothing breaks. And then of course, if something breaks, if so, if this process fails, you just control Z and get back to a working state since you didn't modify that much between each test. That's why refactoring by tiny amounts and constantly testing, those are the two very, very important steps to a good refactoring. However, there are also different scales of refactoring. Basically what I'm talking about here usually refers to refactoring just one small piece, let's say one system. But if you are doing a component restructuring where you are doing basically a component rewrite as opposed to really just a refactoring. So refactoring usually means reorganizing things to make it a bit better. Whereas a complete restructuring, a complete remake, basically means you are going to completely ignore everything that you wrote and write everything again. Kind of like you would do normally when starting from a prototype, then before you go into production, usually you get rid of the prototype and just remake the whole thing. So in that case, if it is a drastic refactor in the sense of a complete restructuring, then yes, I will keep the old files around until the new system fully works. But most refactors are not of that type. Most times you can just refactor one tiny bit at a time without risking breaking everything. So yep, if it is a massive refactor, if it is something where it's going to end up being completely different from what I had previously, if so, then yep, usually I will have a backup of the previous file of the previous iteration. And as I'm basically remaking the whole thing, I'm basically trying to make sure that I achieve the exact same behavior that I had previously with much better quality code. So in that sense, I do have either the old file or really just the old code commented out. And I keep that commented out code in the code base whilst I'm building the new version. But then of course, importantly, when the new version is done, when it's finished, I go ahead and I clean up the old commented code. But like I said here, most refactors are not of that type. Most times you can just refactor one tiny bit at a time without risking breaking everything. The most important thing about refactoring is really just how it's meant to be a constant process. So anytime you're writing code, anytime you're making your game, you're making some kind of system, some kind of mechanic, literally anything, anytime you're doing that, as you're interacting with your old code, you should always be analyzing that code and seeing, could I remake this? Could I refactor this in a better way? And if the answer is yes, then take some time to go back, clean it up, make it a bit better, and then keep moving forward. Always remember the concept of technical debt. This is basically bad code that you continue living inside of your code base as you add more and more features. And if you continuously do that, your productivity will go down, down, down until it gets to the point where you can't add anything just because everything is so messy. I have to say that's exactly what I experienced myself when I was working on my own game, Survivor Squad Gauntlets. This game was very complex and by the time I got to the end, it was pretty much impossible to add new features. Just because back then I didn't have the, let's say, carefulness of writing good clean code that I do nowadays. Back then I was really just trying to make things work. And that strategy does work up to a point. 
But then you get to a point where you've already got so many mechanics and you want to continue adding more mechanics. But anytime you add something, you've got to modify a hundred different other things just because the code is not well written. And the way that you avoid this, the way that you avoid basically happening the same thing that happened to me, is exactly through refactoring. Basically, as I was making this game, I should have taken the time every week, every few days, every time that I interact with known system to go back, refactor that system, make it high quality before moving forward. That's what I should have done. But no, what I did was really just add more and more mechanics, more and more features. And yeah, until it got to the point where I really couldn't add any more just because I was completely crushed by a mountain of tech and that. So refactoring, remember, it's a constant process. It is really, really important. And in practical terms, how do you refactor? You really just refactor one tiny piece at a time whilst constantly testing to make sure nothing breaks, make sure the behavior still stays exactly the same. If you do that, and if you do that constantly, then your code quality will be super high and you'll be able to make more and more complex games without drowning in a mountain of technical debt. And if you want to learn how to make games, then check out my free complete courses. If you want to learn the super valuable C Sharp language itself, then check out my free C Sharp course. It covers everything from the language from beginner to advanced. Or if you prefer learning how to make a game itself, you can watch my free Catch and Chaos course. That one will teach you how to make a really awesome 3D game. Alternatively, I just recently released my free Learner Lander 2D course. So this is a great beginner 2D course. Alternatively, for multiplayer, you can check out my free course on making a simple multiplayer game. Or if you're more advanced, then check out my DOTS course. This is definitely very advanced stuff, but if you are an intermediate user, then DOTS is an insanely powerful tool that I really think you should know. So yep, check out all of those with the link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.